In this video, we will talk about the trick called uh, residual learning that allows uh, building deeper models and vision. So why do we need deeper models and vision? Presumably because the practice shows that they achieve probably better results in visual recognition. Uh, the uh, motivation for this and the reason for having a deeper model is that uh, depth of internal representation is able to capture the hierarchy of functions that uh, exist in the real world. Throughout the years, models with uh, more depth have achieved greater success uh, both in ImageNet large-scale uh, visual recognition challenge and have achieved uh, uh, significant depth from 8 layers to 20 and even more. Uh, residual learning allows stacking more layers without any significant loss uh, in um, performance. Uh, when deepened networks are able to start converging, a degradation problem has been exposed. When the network depth uh, is uh, increased, accuracy gets saturated, which might be not that surprising. But then it degrades rapidly. Unexpectedly, this degradation is not caused by overfitting, so we cannot regularize. And adding more layers to a suitably deep model leads to higher learning error. So that's what's happening when we just try to stack more convolutional layers on top of each other. However, uh, we can tackle this uh, distressing problem uh, by a deep residual learning framework. Recall that eventually we want a network to fit some mapping from the pixel space to the space of labels, decomposed into smaller mappings implemented by layers. Instead of hoping each few stacked layers directly fit a desired underlying mapping, we explicitly let these layers fit a residual mapping. Formally denoting the desired underlying mapping as H, we let the stacked nonlinear layers fit another mapping, F of X, which is H of X minus X. The original mapping is, re is recast into F of X plus X. The hypothesis is that it is easier to optimize the residual mapping than to optimize the original mapping. To this extreme, uh, if an identity mapping were optimal, it would be easier to push the residual to zero than to fit an identity mapping by a stack of nonlinear layers. Residual connections can be incorporated not only into a simple architectures such as the VGG architecture and go from one stack of convolutional layers to the other stack of convolutional layers, but it can also be incorporated into more sophisticated convolutional blocks. One example is the inception architecture that consists of such blocks and it has been uh, shown to achieve very good performance at relatively low computational cost. The introduction of residual connections in conjunction with a more traditional architecture has yielded state-of-the-art uh, performance in the 2015 uh, large-scale uh, visual recognition challenge. Its performance was similar to the latest generation inception v3 framework uh, network. This raises the question of whether there really are uh, any benefit in combining the inception architecture with residual connection. In fact, there are. When the residual connections were introduced in connection with uh, uh, in inception v4, it has yielded a new state of the art in the next year, in 2016, large scale visual recognition challenge. The resulting network uh, is uh, codenamed Inception ResNet V2 and is currently the most advanced uh, convolutional architecture for vision. In fact, there are more advanced uh, architectures for vision that people have been looking at. Uh, if we look, for example, uh, at the mathematical expressions for convolution and p-norm subsampling, which is uh, max pooling effectively for p equal uh, infinity, we will see that their mathematical expressions are effectively equivalent. One can therefore ask the question whether and why any special layers such as max pooling really need to be introduced into the network in the first place. 
Well, a, a complete answer of this question is not easy to give. Nevertheless, we assume that, in general, there exist three possible explanations why pooling can help in CNNs. The first is that p-norm is capable of making the representation in a convolutional neural network more invariant. The second possibility is that the spatial dimensionality reduction performed by pooling makes covering larger parts of the input in higher layers possible. And the third possible explanation is the feature-wise nature of the pooling operation as opposed to a convolutional layers where features get mixed, could make optimization easier. A research has been conducted and the, uh, with, uh, where uh, the authors uh, sought to replace the max pooling to, uh, with a convolution of a stride greater than one. It turned out that Removing any complicated activations, response normalization, and max pooling resulted in an, uh, in an uh, convolutional architecture that was just as effective as the traditional architecture, such as AlexNet, that uh, extensively used max pooling after each convolutional layer. This suggests that effective convolutional architectures can be implemented without the uh, redundant layers such as max pooling whatsoever. Another uh, attempt to extend the uh, established models for a computer vision was the stochastic depth optimization algorithm. Uh, deep networks with stochastic depth is a novel training algorithm that is based on the seemingly contradictory insight that ideally we would like to have a deep network during testing before, because it would perform better, but a short network during training, because it would uh, train faster and uh, better and uh, be less prone to vanishing gradients problem during both forward and backward directions of computation. Therefore, we can create a deep uh, residual network that would have as uh, much as a uh, thousand layers, which would mean enough capacity for fitting arbitrarily complex functions. But then, during training, we would remove uh, randomly one quarter of its layers independently for each mini-batch of training examples. That would give us a lower expected depth of the network during training. And eventually, consequently, we will get a 25% training speedup and 25% uh, relative improvement in error rate, as was shown uh, uh, in experiments. This uh, feature makes the stochastic depth learning procedure suitable for deep networks with extremely large number of layers, such as a thousand layer uh, ResNet. In fact, convolutional networks can be uh, substantially deeper, more accurate, and uh, more efficient to train if they contain shorter connections between layers close to the input and those close to the output. Dense convolutional network, or DenseNet, uh, connects each layer to every other layer in a feed-forward fashion. Whereas a, a traditional convolutional or network with L layers have L connections, one between each layer and its subsequent layer, DenseNet has L uh, times L plus 1 divided by two direct connections between each and every layer in the network. The DenseNet is parameter efficient and that's a possibly counterintuitive effect of this dense connectivity pattern. In fact, it requires fewer parameters than traditional convolutional networks, as there is no need to relearn re redundant feature maps. In fact, the depth of each uh, convolutional feature map is as low as 12, added to the previous feature maps. And besides better parameter efficiency, one big advantage of DenseNet is uh, their improved flow of information and gradients throughout the network, which makes them easy to train. To summarize this fragment, residual connections help backpropagate errors in very deep networks, leading to better generalization. Some research has shown that, uh, in fact, we don't really need the pooling or max pooling operations in a network if we switch the stride of the convolutional layer to be greater than 1. So, max pooling does not always improve performance of convolutional neural networks. 
we could use uh, uh, procedures such as stochastic depth uh, to train uh, very deep networks because the network expected depth reduces during training while maintaining the full depth at uh, inference. Such connectivity patterns uh, as uh, those introduced by a depth net network is one possibility to build parameter efficient architectures for recognition while maintaining or even improving accuracy and uh, training speed.